Good afternoon, Senior Minister of State, Graceful, Excellencies, Mayors, Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I ask myself what are the key words that come to my mind as a result of the last three days of conference. I think, I, I think the word is, I understand better about cities. I've learned a lot. I've been inspired and I'm cautiously optimistic. These are the words. And uh, so, because I think we, in three days, we share a lot of urban issues and also exchange our experience in, in challenge, urban challenges. And uh, we have compiled to, to collectively a more comprehensive shopping list of urban needs and we have exchanged success stories and also uh, share new insights. So my colleagues at uh, CLC asked me to put the clock back 70 years to connect all the words, all the dots into uh, a final picture of what we have discussed. And it's daunting but delightful. And guess what? I discovered that after connecting the dots, I see four pictures. So I'm going to show you the four pictures. The first one is consensus about cities. Um, there's a cons consensus on the broad trends and on thoughts of urbanization. Urbanization, we all agree, is unstoppable. There's, instead of stopping growth, we have to find ways to deal with the growth. And there's a stronger need because of that to make city green and good. Second is that urban explosion is imminent. So we have to remember to develop a city more in more compact way rather than sprawl and also think in terms of long term. And good environment, we must believe, we believe will bring economic competitive edge higher quality of life, and at the same time, unfortunately, bring greater pressure to conserve, uh, or to, for us to conserve resources. Cities can more directly address, address environmental issues, city, and therefore the cities must make quick and smart choices. And because we must look at cities as more a solutions rather than problems. And because, as we just heard, a city is our future. We can't run away from that. Now, we also have a better understanding of the nature of cities. It's a concentration of people which creates networks, bring new ideas and innovation, generate economic growth, but in, and in turn, attract more people. But the cities, cities are complex and closely related. It's a closely related system of many systems. There are many connecting parts, each with specific functions like housing, transportation, environment, etc. And the shock to any one part can affect other parts. So a city is a living organism in constant flux, evolving and adapting all the time. That was picture one. Now, take me, let me take you to picture two. It's about the uh, key, ingredients, key ingredients and values in developing the city. And I think I'll just repeat what uh, Ambassador Cabo just said, and that is we have to believe that urbanization should be by design and not by default. I thought that was a great quote. So, uh, so I'm, I think that in reviewing all the things, many things that we heard in the last few days, maybe we could look at cities in terms of functional city, sustainable city, resilient city, livable city, and creative city. Let me just take you through them. Functional cities, obviously, we're familiar that we need to care about economics, infrastructure, transportation, housing, commercial centers, industrial estates, and so on. For sustainable city, 
quality environment, green, low carbon, alternative e energies, either you know, with uh, wind, wind power or solar power, should be looked at. And also, we should think about sustainable development in, in response to or to take care of the, 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 uh, the threat of climatic change, the reducing energy supply, and so on. And also, we need to think in terms of, to make the city sustainable, smart investment. We have to think long term. In our investment, we have to think low carbon. Next is uh, resilient cities. Well, I thought I really learned a very nice new definition of safety in a city, in a resilient city. It's safety from crime, from disasters, from shortage of water supply, from energy shortage. It's a much broader definition. And also we have to think about storm, storm and also great water ponds. We have to be disaster prepared and also we have to find a way to avert global warming. That's a resilient city. Livable city, we don't have to say too much. We talk about quality of life, happiness. It's this uh, word seems to be repeated many times. Also social cohesion, community spirit, ethnic harmony, inclusive, inclusiveness. And actually, while we are all trying to move from the third world to the first world, we also are moving ourselves from primary to tertiary industry, and we're moving from industrial-based economy to knowledge-based economy. And just a few delightful, I call it, urban candies. For example, we heard the story about 10-minute 10 10 walk to parks, the urban farms, and harbour bath and bike rides. These are the kind of, uh, uh, well, dressing to the cake. And the last one on the, uh, on the second picture is creative city. We need to think in terms of culture. We have to think about the city as an environment that would generate creative innovation. And that will be done through education, research, innovation, and obviously uh, invitation to, for a creative industry to participate. Now let me take you to picture three. That means how do we realize the dreams in picture two? Again, you just heard repeatedly, good government is almost like the first foundation step to any urban endeavor. Credible, long-serving, exper long experienced, uh, experience with the past problems, these are, this are the kind of government that we're looking for. And also, in a government or society, we should avoid silo mentality. We need to uh, take a holistic approach and need to think long term. Just now, I was delighted to hear that to, to, to achieve this, maybe one quick, simple way, short way, is to organize major games or expo just to galvanize the people of the city together. The other one is the process. With a good government, we still have to think about the process. The, the word PPP was uh, said many times, and somebody was saying that PPP should stand for good leadership, enterprise innovation, and citizen participation. And obviously, we'll continue to look for the widest possible definition of PPP in order to help the progress of the city. And there was a question whether, whether the process should combine top-down plus bottom-up. It wasn't discussed a lot, but I think there was a kind of quiet agreement that it has to be both top-down plus bottom-up. Bottom up. And also, um, maybe we need 
capacity building for, for the city on basic issues as well as specialized issues. I think, personally, I feel that we sometimes overlook the capacity to do the basic things in the city. And there was also a talk that for the city to progress well, citizens', citizens education would be important. Now, uh, the means of creating this kind of city, spatial planning, which is uh, which may help to prevent problems instead of waiting for a problem to, to arise and then try to remedy. Spatial planning may be able to do that. Of course, there are other means that, uh, to complement the spatial planning is urban renewal, the up, updating of uh, regulations, and obviously uh, strong government support, including the support of central government, will be necessary. Not, for, to, not to, forget, to forget that, to make the step forward, we also need, need technologies. Uh, just uh, off the cuff, green mobility, like electric cars, would be something that we should look forward to. Waste to energy management is something that would be essential for us to look at. Now, we come to picture number four, uh, is importance of spatial planning. The, uh, I, I was trying to see how this can be explained in a more convincing way. If urbanization is like uh, a sh an urban ship moving to a destination, you need uh, moving to a happy destination, you need compass, you need a good compass, you need a good blueprints to build this urban ship, which is always self-renewing, self-reinventing, and never ending. And you need good stewardship to steer the ship. Now, I think a compass is like the vision of the city government as well as the citizens. The, the urban ship is actually the urbanization process itself. Stewardship, of course, is urban management. I just want to uh, emphasize that we need to pay more attention to the blueprint because, as you notice in the last few days, that there are many ideas. Many of them, of them are in sync with each other, but there are many others which are in conflict with each other. And therefore, you need an effort, an arduous effort, to try to create this city blueprint, which is a, a concept plan or a strategic plan, to try to uh, force the city to make responsible choices, to also plan for the needs rather than plan for capability. And also, it is an agenda to make quick and good actions to avoid false starts. And by doing so, maybe we can uh, minimize the use of resources. Maybe I can call it re resource avoidance rather than talking only about resource reduction. I think if we can have resource avoidance, then to talk about resource reduction would be much, much easier. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, we have almost come to the end of the summit. We would like to now invite our guest of honour for this plenary, Ms. Grace Fu, Senior Minister of State for Environment and Water Resources Singapore, to say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for a very insightful and fruitful discussion on the integrated urban strategies for livable and sustainable cities. For everyone here who attended the sessions over the last few days, 
I hope that this summit has given all of us the opportunity to exchange views on the possible solutions to the pressing challenges in cities today. I'm sure the discourse has given us food for thought, as Ambassador said, excess baggage, as we tackle the challenges we face in our own cities. The unprecedented rate and scale of urbanization has presented both opportunities and challenges. Sustainability and livability is a journey, a process, not an endpoint. With careful balancing and optimization of the environmental, social, and economic objectives, cities can seize the opportunities of urbanization, realize the dream of its people, provide opportunities that they look forward to, and tackle its challenges systematically. Achieving sustainability and livability requires strong governance. One of the fundamental roles of government is to provide a broader framework whereby the private and people sectors can participate actively in the building of cities. The private sector wants clarity, certainty, predictability. So the government has to come up with the long-term vision, create plans and policies that enable the private sector to participate with the latest technology and solutions, and implement these plans with transparency and credibly. Government can encourage public-private partnerships through facilitating the test baiting of integrated urban solutions and new technologies, platforms for collaborations. By providing the opportunity for test baiting, Singapore has been able to tap the benefits of new technology and also export our services. Some of these large-scale integrated living labs in Singapore include the Pongo Eco Town for residential test bait, Clean Tap Park for industrial test bait, and Jurong Lake District for mixed-use residential, commercial, retail development test bait. I encourage you to visit these sites during your stay in Singapore. It is in the spirit of sharing of ideas and practical solutions that we saw a huge success at this year's World City Summit. When we first started the WCS in 2008, we have aimed to create a unique platform for the exchange of best practices amongst leaders. It was the first of its kind. For the third run this year, we brought on board a larger presence of solution providers and investors who are critical partners in our efforts to make our cities more livable and sustainable. And we have seen an unprecedented participation of over 1,100 delegates from 76 countries, spanning 191 cities, including over 100 mayors, 15 ministers, heads of IOs and NGOs, and business leaders. I believe this has greatly enriched the discussions and has brought many fruitful discourse. Managing city is indeed a highly complex endeavour. The Closed Door World City Summit Mayors Forum on Sunday has brought together mayors from cities with diverse needs to share their challenges and best practices. Next year in 2013 will be the first time that the Mayors Forum travels out of Singapore to the city of Bilbao winner of the inaugural Lee Kuan Yew World City Prize in 2010. Another highlight of this year's WCS is the Lee Kuan Yew World City Prize, awarded to the City of New York in recognition of its remarkable transformation from the devastating September 11 event. Within a short span of time, the city has reinvented and rejuvenated to give her people renewed confidence and optimism for the future. I hope that the inspiring story of New York's urban rejuvenation can be a motivation to cities undergoing similar transformations, that with bold vision, strong leadership, determination and excellent partnership between government and citizens, a city can regain perch as one of the most exciting cities in the world. As Dr. Liu and Ambassador Burhan has summarized, Previously, discussion at the WCS has shown 
the complexity in managing cities. I would like to urge all participants not to get lost in the complexities and not to forget that at the heart of policy making is the promise to improve the lives of our people, to build a living environment that the residents are proud to call home. And I thought that my ministers gave a wonderful quote yesterday, and I'd like to repeat it here. Mr. Vivian said, quote, build the most beautiful city you can, plus as many trees as you can, invest in the latest technology, conserve water, energy and resources, and find a way to have honest, competent and visionary leadership. With that, I wish that you had a fruitful and productive time at the WCS. For all our overseas guests, a safe journey back home, and I look forward to seeing you in Singapore 2014. Thank you.